Happy Thursday, and welcome to this week's episode of Tech Bytes, powered by Veeam. I am Rick Vanover, the Rickatron, and I have with me Her Majesty, Rin Bytes, is back after who knows how long. Uh, Corinne, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent. Now, as for the Majesty, can we talk about that for a moment? I, I kind of need like a t-shirt, new logo. I don't know where that came from. It's just (laughs) wild stuff you do when you're alive. But um, yeah, it's been a while. You need to come back on. Well, I I promise we'll get you on more. Um, T-shirt, sticker, maybe job title. No, I don't know about that. But uh, we're we're back. It's been a while. And, you know, Corinne, Microsoft 365, Veeam Data Cloud, been a really solid part of our business. That's what we're going to talk about here today. Um, You know, I think that it's been really exciting the last couple of months that since we've had Veeam Data Cloud in market. How's it been for for you? You know, you have helped evangelize Veeam Data Cloud and M365 backup in general, but it's it's been really moving quick. It has been moving so fast. It's been somewhat hard to keep up with. This platform has given us an entirely new way to consume the backup product that we already have for Microsoft 365 environments. And Veeam Data Cloud is our backup as a service. And not to say anything different from what our providers offer, they have their own level of special sauce, but this is another simplest way that you can get data protection for an environment that is very vulnerable to all kinds of attacks and all types of breaches, especially when you're trying to come right through the front door. And now we have that plus the Microsoft Azure backup and Veeam Data Vault. Do you got a little bit more insights on that one for us? Yeah, indeed. So let's take a look at the the picture here that I have up on the screen. This is Veeam Data Cloud. These three services are what are on offer here currently. And Veeam Data Cloud Vault, very easy way that you can immediately have offsite immutable storage in Veeam Data Cloud. So I'm really excited for this offering. But you mentioned it, Corinne, that we have the different uh, offerings from our service providers as well as installable software. And when we look at uh, Microsoft 365, you know, there's a lot to it, but how does Veeam Data Cloud make that easier? So I think this just really plays into the same story that Veeam has been staying from day one. We're agnostic and we give you the ability to consume our models in the way that makes sense to your business. So with the Veeam backup for Microsoft 365, also migrating over to a consumption model with the Veeam Data Vault, we allow you to just hands off, not have to worry about the storage, not have to worry about the software installation, and just say, hey, I have 500 users, I want all of them backed up, and I want a handful of administrators and help desk operators to have various roles to be able to orchestrate these restores back to those end users. And this platform really gives you the control of your Microsoft 365 intellectual property to then still have the ability to restore it and get that back with those privilege zone separations. So a couple of things I want to highlight there that I see as additional benefits for, for this model of Veeam Data Cloud. Number one, if you are, first of all, if you're not backing up Microsoft 365 data, you should talk to us. But anyways, if you do want to back up Microsoft 365 data, what's really cool about this offering is all of the sizing you don't have to worry about. That is actually a big deal when it comes to, you know, thinking about, well, where's the backups going to go, what type of proxies and timing is, it's details, right? And the second thing, any of you who are admins, you will love this one. There's no more upgrade windows. You won't be on call to do product updates once version 8 comes out and version 9 and version 10 and version 11, all the way on down. You won't have to do that. So, Corinne, those are two things that I think are really valuable for having this kind of all-inclusive offering here. But there was a really big milestone, and we're going to do some demos here in a second. But uh, tell me about recent news with uh, this new Microsoft 365 backup storage capability. 
So before we dive directly into this, I just want to remind everyone, if you have any questions about anything that we're talking about right now, please drop that in the chat. We'd love to answer your questions because this can be a lot to take in all at once, especially if you've not already seen our original postings on the Veeam Data Cloud architecture. Now for the Microsoft 365 side, we have been working with Microsoft themselves in the Microsoft Backup Storage. Now to kind of understand this a little better, what Microsoft Backup Storage is, is the ability to clone the underlying databases of the Microsoft 365 infrastructure to create a record in an archive in a separate privileged zone. Now, what we're able to offer on top of that is putting them within the same window as your original backups for the Microsoft 365, have a longer retention with the more flexible side of this equation, more integrated and granular restores of this flexible side. But if you need to instantly recover massive amounts of data, we have our Express Edition, which allows you to do full mailbox, full site, or full restores back to that original location. Now, a couple of things here, Corinne, that I think are really solid is, okay, now, friends, if you have ever been with Corinne and I, especially when we're not like live and on camera, I'm notorious for like, well, I'm going to say something, Corinne, you tell me if I said it wrong, all right? What I really like about this Microsoft 365 backup storage, I love my analogies, okay? This, Corinne, really feels like, in a way, using a storage snapshot on an array to do a backup. You've got some, some capability of the platform helping you out. Is that a fair way to explain it to my neighbor? I wholeheartedly have used that exact same expression to define this platform, but I do want to kind of stress that sometimes mixing up these terminologies have gotten me in trouble with our development team. <laughs> so yes, as much as I want to say this is exactly what's happening, if I have to explain to someone that's never heard uh, Microsoft backup storage before and they know what a storage snapshot is, it's the same speed, the same restoration process and the snapshot of that instance of way your environment is at that moment to be able to roll back a single mailbox or a single site or OneDrive is exactly like we would see. Yeah, and again, I, I, I live in a world of analogies, right? It's it's just one of those things that I think is a good way to help tell the story. But this is a very advanced offering. And, and Veeam, our claim is that we were the first ISV to have it supported in market. So we're really happy to have that uh, on offer right now. And it's really making a big difference for honestly just getting started with an organization, that first full backup, things like that. And honestly, I have big optimism that other software as a service offerings in the market may also get into doing this as well as a kind of a framework using something like this. I think all kinds of things could benefit from this, but enough of me talking about it. Now, Corinne, I was hoping, you know, this is Tech Bytes. You've been playing with it. I want to get into the business of showing this for a little bit. So let's go ahead and prepare up your screen share and we will take a look the first look at uh veeam data cloud for microsoft backup storage on offer right now absolutely and this has really been a fantastic experience to be a part of because we didn't just start with this backup storage we've had this policy in place and as you can see we have already had 10 months of backups from this original retention point and this flexibility to do those granular stores and with a couple people sitting here at the top of the list you can really tell we spend a lot of time in this environment huh? <laughs> I, so, I, I don't know why i would be the highest storage user I, I i do know why i distribute a few things but i don't know if it, it can't be that much but even though it's the cloud these are the reasons why some of those first full backups take a while Absolutely. And there are original things in here, like getting to know how many protected users, how many licenses you're using, and how many licenses are not being used in your environment. So little things like that can save a lot of money when you're looking at license costs and structure overall. Change management, 
doesn't always work the same way at every company. Now, why we're all here is actually about the different types of backup. And I have a few different types of backup selected here in the organization. And you can see the backup type is backup, which is really referring to our flexibility to do granular restores, small items, and things like that. And the MBS. Now, MBS in this case is the Microsoft Backup Storage. These policies allow you to either do selected items or the entire organization. And if you have selected items, we can take a look and edit that list at any time to say, I want to add additional users into this environment, remove different users from this environment. Maybe we've decided things like shared mailboxes aren't exactly as important to the organization as having individual users and that C suite. But you have the flexibility to select those items and later on exclude some of those items from the policy if that makes sense for you. Now the big difference here is when we're looking at the flex side, we're going to be able to see the SharePoint and the individual files for that restore. Let's go ahead and take a look at our SharePoint. So with SharePoint, we're able to restore shared SharePoint sites using both the Flex and the Express options in the console. And you know we like doing this live, which means we get to see a couple loading windows here. So bear with us. Well, I'm sorry that I'm taking up so much data to slow it down. I use SharePoint as well. It's my fault partially. Maybe just a little. All right, so we have the first hand look here at being able to restore a full site. Now this gives you the nice warning that you will overwrite because these are restores back to the original location with the same UUIDs, the same connections, the same permissions, everything that you would expect if you lost this site today and you got to restore it tomorrow, it's going to be exactly like it was prior to the loss window. Now you can also select separate restore points for a more flexible restore option, which is everything that you expect to gain from our console from our previous Veeam backup for Microsoft 365 product. Now I can select this and do just a full site restore. And that's all we need to do to start that process. And again, all of these great loading windows, uh, this is now released and restore has started. While that's kicking off, I do want to point out some of the granularity because it gets a little scary seeing that you can download files, export files, and do everything in your environment. But I'd like to point out you can create specialized roles to only be able to restore and export or restore back to original locations, including the ability to exclude certain high touch accounts. Maybe you exclude your C-suite, people that might be handling purchase orders or anything of that nature and sensitive data. Corinne, uh, on that real quick, you see how it says, you, it looks like for help desk, it says block download to local. I think that's a very important control. So let me make sure I understand that. So you have that set that the, um, or you could have that set that the help desk for the C-suite would not be allowed to do recoveries that download the data locally. Is that a correct statement? Correct, which is yeah. exactly why I don't have this here. I don't even let a preview of an email. This means all you can see is the title and the subject of an email and be able to restore it back to the original location, not new locations, not downloading it locally. This is, in my opinion, going through the roles, probably the optimal and most secure way to have a help desk role. And you so, can define all yeah. of these on your own. Tell me you have data loss prevention without telling me you have data loss prevention, Veeam. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. And that's all there is to it. It's a simple console. It's very intuitive to get into. And it's really easy to add additional users. Again, you might recognize some of the names on this list who has requested access to the service. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> one question just came in from Mark on one of the streams. Mark wants to know if I'm already using, um, it, he says on prem VBO365, I'm trying so hard, Mark, not to keep saying that too. Can I migrate to Veeam Data Cloud? Now, the thought here is talk to sales, but my thought is 
they probably can. They would just have to talk to the sales team on that one. But I think it's also important if we want to take a look at um, Veeam Data Cloud as well. We have these really cool Walnut demos on the website, Corinne. And like this is this is actually super important because correct me if I'm wrong, this fills the void of where we uh, have historically had like download a trial, install a demo. This is a very easy, like instant way that you can take a look at this product in action. Absolutely. You don't have to talk to a salesperson. You don't have to install anything locally to your machine. And you don't really have to do much more than say, hey, I want to look at what this product does. And you can click through. It gives you little pop-up windows of like, hey, this is what this setting means and what it might mean to your environment. It's a really quick, what does this look like? How do I show it off? prior to initiating, is this what I really want to get started with or is it worth my time? Indeed. And I, I think I should add that the Veeam Data Cloud Walnut demos are available both for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure. And then I don't know if there is yet one for Veeam Data Cloud Vault, but I'll just explain it to everyone. It is already in market. It is basically a, a Veeam repository. You can put it in Sober. It's in the product wizard right now, so it's very easy to get started. So again, Veeam Data Cloud is a very important chapter of the Veeam story, very important addition to our portfolio. And you can go over to Veeam Data Cloud or even Veeam.com really and just start looking at some of those, getting a high level view. And uh, I feel like, you know, in fact, you go back, Corinne, to our history when we first rolled this in, you were really loving some of uh, like the numbers that come up in this screen right here. That was really attractive to you. You're like, oh, I love how they do some of that monitoring. Even in this data, I think that type of information right at a glance is super useful. I may have been saying for a few years now that I wish that we could monitor more of the Microsoft 365 environment. And they're just like, Shh, wait, it's coming. And I'm like, so excited. All right, Words. all right. <laughs> Words. Words are tough sometimes. But uh, no, anyways, Corinne, thank you so much for being with us here on this episode of Tech Bytes. A couple of important promotions. Uh, number one, on the 27th, Tuesday of next week, we're going to have a topic table takeover. In fact, it even says TBD. I don't even know what it's going to be. It's either going to be something related to another product release or something related to some innovation. So we don't know yet. Stay tuned. On Thursday, the 29th, I will be back next week. You got me one more time before I go on some travels. And I'm going to be hosting Dante from 1111. So really important Veeam cloud service provider, FOV friend of Veeam. Big thank you out to Jeffrey, our producer, as well as Felicia handling social media across uh, Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn, I think, is where we're streaming here today. But uh, Corinne, thank you so much for being with me. It has been an absolute pleasure, and there are some more things coming, so I may not be too long gone. Oh, uh, there we go. We are going to keep coming with this Veeam Data Cloud topic and more, and there's a big release for Veeam Backup for Microsoft 365 right around the corner. But anyways, stay tuned. Every Thursday, Tech Bytes right here. You know where to go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great rest of your week.